before I head back out to California, I wanted to do like a quick uh, Q&A with Mike since you have him here. Just for stuff you guys were wondering about the show, the car, etc. So we're literally at the airport with matching shirts. About to answer some questions. You didn't even know you had a matching shirt? Nah, I didn't even know. Yeah, this dude copied me. I had it first. I woke up before him. Yeah. So Mike, I'm going to read the questions to you. You probably can't, hear, can't understand my writing because I was doing it quickly. And then we'll just go from there. All right, so the first question, you gotta get closer. Get cl okay. All right, so the first question is, uh, how stressful was building that car? Like to you, like? I mean, it was 14 days to build a car that we've never built before. So it, it was kind of, you know, it wasn't like so stressful because we, you know, we do this a lot, but it was like more on the stressful side of something that we never done before. So, eh. to me, it was more the environment. It was fucking hot. It wasn't that it was stressful. Literally, like, we were working on the in floor. the middle of the summer on the floor, and it was super hot. So, yeah. it was that's that was stressful about me. Um, so same car, same budget. What would you do differently? Uh, realistically, nothing, because the car worked the way we planned it. Uh, there wasn't anything that we bought by mistake, or anything that we shouldn't have bought, or like that. Because to me, I thought that everything that was bought was meant for the purpose, and I wouldn't really change anything in the car. We, we thought it out really well. You know, we didn't buy everything at the beginning. We bought everything as we went. So you know, we don't regret it. Like really, anything that we did, the car came out pretty good. So Mike, how much would it actually cost someone to get a built engine just like that? Motor-wise, like, I found REWs for 500, I found REWs for 2,000. So it ranges from there for a block, and then plus the build, you know, parts, labor, which, you know, on, on the show, labor's not included. So, you know, labor adds a big part to the engine. Yeah, on the show, like, the actual, like, uh parts we spent to build the engine what it actually cost for to parts. build an engine we didn't actually buy engines like parts cheaper we bought the parts at cost yeah. so building so, an engine like that would cost around five grand just mainly because all the labor that goes into it it you know we spent like two days doing stuff to the engine not counting things that were already done to the engine before that you know from the past like the semi peripherals were already done, you know, the assembly had already been balanced, you know, stuff like that takes time and money. So, why didn't you build a 12A? Uh, the 12 A's are known to have bad housing, so it would have been a big race for us to just take the engine apart, and spend then, money buying the parts, and then the housings are flaked out. Yeah. So they, the how the chrome where the apex seals seal that that flakes off a lot on 12 is not because of a bad design mainly because the car was from the 80s you know and they've been running for a really really long time 12 ways are known to be bulletproof but they're you know they last so long that they're worn out you know the the chrome is missing on them because so i mean there's there's plenty of high horsepower 12 ways out there uh we just didn't want to experiment knowing that basically like what the outcome could have been. Like we, if we were built, spent a lot of time building the engine, it wouldn't have worked because we never built a really high horsepower 12 turbo. We were about, we were lost the show, but we knew the plan we had. We knew what engine to go with because we do it all the time. When are you last coming to New Zealand? Uh, we need to plan it out because Tommy went. Yeah. Our boy Tommy went. That Mountain Dew Tommy went to yeah. New Zealand. He had a lot of fun. The, the rotary scene over there is huge. So I, we would definitely be interested in going one day. Just gotta plan it out because I have to bring Mochi and Mike has to plan emotionally leaving his baby behind. That's gonna be the biggest thing. What are you gonna do with the car at the building battle? Uh, I'm gonna, we discussed everything on the video we, we posted before this. So we're, we're just gonna, gonna raise it. yeah, we're just gonna like upgrade a little bit, race it, try to go as fast as we can, go for the car is to yeah. hit eight seconds. And a cooler, methanol, and, and just make it faster. Yeah, and us. Why no hot boy vinyl? Uh, RX-7s mm -hmm. are, like, they're really nice, so we're not trying to like, screw, mess up the car. And money. It wasn't money, because we still have some money left over. 
but it's more like this. It's a classic car. The paint was really nice on it. We buffed the paint out, so there's no point of just throwing shit on it just to make it look cool. Like, well, yeah, you guys, I guess nobody's seen the car buffed out yet, so, you know. Well, this is after the race, so they yeah. haven't seen it. It says, why not go with a Microtech scene data? The fastest in, they're the fastest in drag scene. Uh, My, Microtech is, is known to be a good ECU for drag racing, but it, it is a wide open throttle ECU. So that's why we didn't choose it because we're gonna street drive the car also. So we need a computer that does VE tuning. Microtech does not do VE tuning. So VE tuning will make it like easier and more like streetable. That's why we chose to go with the Haltech. What was your biggest concern facing Brad? Uh, there really wasn't any, like we knew what kind of builds he does. They're budget but fast. But a well thought out plant car can always be a, basically a fast car. Like, doesn't matter the car makes way more power than us. Uh, the, if the car is heavy, uh, if you are factoring in just one thing, which is just nitrous, that's why it basically gave us the advantage. We had everything planned out from the traction and everything just to basically count down like the little things that could have gotten us beat. My my biggest concern was. <clears throat> How I would have built the truck, I would have been afraid of it. That was like, so I was worried of Brad building the truck, how I would build it. It says, what sort of rule bending actually happened? Uh, for us, the, they try to say we were buying parts from friends, which we didn't, supposedly, allegedly. But uh, with Brad, uh, he just didn't plan anything out accordingly so he ran out of money from day one so they had to be like safety meetings that tied into his budget so they can actually be able to afford like fuel lines oil lines brake lines none of that even gas none of that was on his budget so they had to add it as safety or something they were supposed to supply to us like the all the racing suits and everything that way the show will actually happen it says, did you actually use that janky clutch you clean with a wire wheel? Yeah. It held up. Well, yeah, it held up pretty good. I mean, it was running 1460 foot, so it held up. So, did it feel good being Brad? Fuck yeah, I did. Uh, he's always been talking shit. I told him one day we're going to get him, and that day I came, basically. He didn't expect it at all. He underestimated both of us. Uh, me, with the building and tuning. Yeah. And Mike, which majority of the I mean, driving. I we underestimated him also in the beginning. He he got like the first couple of races on us. Yeah, well that's because we didn't we didn't uh, for testing tune we didn't really test because uh, it was 114 outside and with no intercooler we'll blow the car up. So it says from one rate the off camera ass beating on Brad or you slapped your ass one to ten. Uh, I couldn't really hurt him because we started to finish the show, so it was about like a six or a seven. It was basically like a, I just. I don't know if you can call it a shove or a push, like a punch in the chest. And it put him out for a little bit, but I still love Brad. Um, how hard was it to handle Brad's annoying ass and your brother cutting into your car? Uh, I left. If you saw the next, like the next day, I left the show. Like, I literally walked away and just had to go home because, not because of Brad, because of this dude. Like, it worked. Yeah. It worked, but he cut the fucking car. Did you and your brother get the results you were expecting? Were they worse or better? Uh, we were expecting a fast car, 5600, which we made. Yeah. Basically, we made over 600. Whoa, whoa. What uh, blew us away was actually the 60 foot. Yeah. We, were, we weren't we're, planning on a 1.4. We were doing better 60 foot than an automatic. Yeah. It, was, car, so it was scary. Like the, I actually had to go back and redesign the seat brackets because the seat was literally it needs a back point, Yeah, it was pulling back and hitting the cage. Yeah, the seat the hardware was support. launching. What are some of the main problems that you ran into that weren't filmed? The only thing that wasn't filmed on our side, our fan uh, yeah. melted. The wires melted and almost caught fire. Too, yeah, the, the fan, fan. The fan that Vinny sold us was garbage. Thanks, Vinny. Uh, so we had to go to our shop and pick up a fan I had laying there and just put it in the car so you can make it to the uh, dyno the next day. So on a scale from one to ten, how much did you and Brad cheat? Uh, like uh, I, realistically, us was about uh, about like a seven. Brad was like an eleven. <laughs> like it was, it was pretty high up there. 
Uh, so yeah, we, even though we both cheated, that's what we, me, me and Mike's plan were like, we had I like, cheat a little bit, but not enough to get caught and enough to beat him. Cause if you cheat and you still lose, you basically, you failed. Um, ever think about taking this car to drag week next year? Uh, I've been wanting to do that forever. Like the same thing with the trip to New Zealand, we had to plan it out cause we both have shops, we both have family. So family is me, I have Mochi and my girlfriend. So we have to plan it out in a way that we can take off that whole week. Cause the car will, the car will like basically perform perfectly, but I kind of want to plan it. So I take, I take the first gen and then my case was repo. Cause the repo is like basically the same shit as the first gen, but in a truck. Why not get some real hot boy wheels with the, all the leftover budget? Uh, we were lying the whole time. We didn't have money. So we're, we're saying we have money for wheels the whole time just to kind of like fuck with Brad's head and get in his head with it. But we're, the whole time we're like kind of like we're deciding, stressing out yeah, we're stressing it, out about yeah. the wheels, what to do with wheels. We almost ran the wheels that came with the car to begin with. Um, just cause uh, we didn't want to spend too much money on wheels. Cause it's not just wheels, it's tires also. And lug nuts and all that crap. So it, it adds up quickly. So that's why we just waited till the end to get wheels. If you have more time, will you be able to build a faster RX-7? Uh, no. We need more money to build a faster RX-7. Well, yeah, no, more time wouldn't have done it. More money, yes. Yeah. But we had we had a day after, we actually finished the car a day before Brad finished work. We had to do the transmission, so we had time to do it. The whole time we knew it was going to be close to the end, the car was going to be running. But to make it faster, we need money for a transmission, money for a nitro setup. Uh, we need a lot, of more, a lot more money, basically. Did you guys ever build a car from scratch beforehand? Uh, every day. Like, oh yeah, but yeah. not a drag car though. Yeah, it doesn't say drag car, it says uh, yeah. car. Car from scratch, yeah, like yeah. all the time. Like yeah. a drag I mean, car from our, scratch, like... That's no. how we make a living, is building cars from scratch. What was your thought when they said you were going up against Brad? I was actually fucking excited. They were trying to have me uh, have a guy, someone in here like close to me your local told me to actually be my uh my helper but i knew i had to bring in the big guns to basically to help me build, be brad because he's not an easy competitor so we had to basically unite to yeah i mean and jose is not you know just a helper either like yeah. that guy basically it was it was an lot. even even uh play for both teams because uh me and brad both took a lot of shit and can drive and then Mike and Jose can build shit so it was pretty even. So why uh, no why no in a uh, water to air that we will need like a good one costs a thousand to two thousand dollars well, easily. Not one that fits the way we wanted to yeah. so I'll have to like plants after the cars like basically in my shop is uh, I have to buy a Garrett core and make the whole inner cooler myself because uh, the spacing we can't just buy anything off the shelf and make it fit. Yeah. Does Brad secretly love rotaries? Uh, he's always loved rotaries. Uh, he's he's told us plenty of times that he used to have a rotary doom buggy, but he blew I mean, it up. There really isn't like a hate with anything. Like I I like V8s, you know, just as much as I like rotaries. You know, that's just you know what I enjoy doing more is rotaries. So I'm sure Brad's the same way. He like likes them. He likes he likes what they do and all that stuff, but he just doesn't mess with. Them doesn't mean you gotta hate something because you don't know how to work on it. How was it working with Big Bro Vargas? Uh, it's actually weird, like, we usually don't get along, but since we both had a, a target in sight, I guess we, we kinda stopped bumping heads and actually did shit together somewhat, because we did argue a lot after the show. It was basically, every day we'll go home, we just argue like, oh, you're doing this shit wrong, you're not doing it right, or you're making me look stupid in front of the camera. Will you do drag racing from now on or just continue drifting? Uh, yeah, being that I have like three or four drift cars and now I have a drag car, I'm doing both and I can just do one. I always wanted a drag car, but they're really hard to, uh, they're not hard, but really expensive to build. So we kind of use this platform. And to set up one nicely, you need like, you know, it's not something you just right off the bat like do. You need some experience to do it. Yeah, so we, so in the beginning when they told us we were supposed to build a drag car, we're like, I, that's why I always say well, this car's going to be ours building for us because we're using the budget from the show to help us build a car because I can't put $10,000 in my own pocket to build a car because I have like responsibilities. So free money to build a car, of course we're down. Horsepower. So on the dyno, it, it was spinning tires on the dyno and the dyno wasn't reading. 
it was only reading up to 6,000 RPM. So we really don't know right now how much power the car makes. We just know that at, at 6,000 RPMs, it makes 400 plus. The, what it makes at 9,000, like, yeah, we don't know yet. The find out. 21 pounds, when I was tuning at 21 pounds, on third gear the 499 Mustang which is 566 I think it's 67 Dyno Jet. Uh, after that we turned the boost to 26 pounds on the dyno. On the four tires. gear spun the tires. And as a track we raised a four gear so, so we we're the dyno wasn't recording the horsepower because it never reached an end RPM. So the dyno was set up on wheel speed. So it did wheel speed and converted it to RPM. So the problem we had was that the car will spin tires, the wheel speed will never uh, get up where it's supposed to go, so the dyno never knew what to read or when to stop. Yeah, or the, like the wheel speed it read on the four gear pull was 35 miles per hour, so you don't, yeah. It was top of four gear and still read 35 miles per hour, so I think it was spinning like crazy. This Brad ended up respecting the rotary engine after the end of races. Uh, yeah, I guess, like we said, yeah. we always liked them. Yeah, the only difference is that at the end of the races, uh, he still didn't respect me because I didn't beat him. He <laughs> respects Mike a lot, but not me. So that's the plan I have on building the car even faster. That would call out the T bucket because I don't care about the S10. They can put turbos in the S10, do whatever they want. I already beat the S10. I don't have to race it again. So I'm going for the T bucket. Uh, how many parts are on the car that were bought from her? Uh, none. We bought all the shit. The transmission that was borrowed uh, for the show, we actually ended up giving it to, we bought it, and ended up giving it to uh, Sergio. to Sergio to pay for a job he's getting done somewhere else. So he was basically borrowing for the transmission for his job. Can a stock transmission really hold 570 horsepower, you say? Uh, nope. It held just because we're running the Magnus valve. And even at that, it still broke the transmission. Yeah, the but it, I think the transmission was bad from the beginning. But it still broke, so it doesn't help. She says, do you enjoy filming the the entire series? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, we didn't have to get picked to do this. It was a, like basically like an opportunity that was presented to us to actually shoot the show, so we appreciate it a lot. And it was fun, I mean, we just do what we do, got paid for it, had free food, uh, paid to do whatever we want, so it was pretty fun. Why the Rincon plates? We're from Rincon, like uh, we were born there and raised, so, that's why we put the place in the car. Is Brad any different off camera? Uh, no, he's an idiot off camera too. He's calmer though. Yeah, on camera he gets a little uh, a little antsy, but he's still he's still Brad off camera. Did you feel like you underestimated the budget constraints at all? Uh, no, we build cars for a living, so we're we're commonly fitting things in a budget. So basically, we'll tally down all the things we spent that day put it on a little app that I have, see how much money we have left over, calculate how much we had to sell the parts for that we can actually get money to finish the build. So, not really. We we had the budget handled all the time. I said, who will win if you had the same car and build? Uh, us, still. Uh, the rotary is actually hard to build. If you put us in an LS car, we'll put it, we'll probably just turbo and tune the shit out of it so we'll still win. We might, might spill the car, a lot of LS before, so. It's not a, it's not like a basically a, something for us that's gonna be hard to do. It says, Mike, was Brad still eating Doritos for breakfast after the race? Yeah, but he's got a, a memory to remember though, I know. <laughs> it says, now you should build a V8 and get Brad to build a rotary. Uh, that wouldn't be fair, because we can build something really fast and for, for you somewhere to build a rotary, uh, it takes time and experience, which like, he won't have time basically to beat us. It says, what's the best deal you got on a used part for the first gen? The clutch. The clutch. So Mike says the clutch, I say the diff. The diff was already shortened. Uh, it had the the bigger axles, the disc brakes. So that thing was like the best, like basically the best buy we did the whole build. Besides the clutch. And the motor. Don't talk about the motor. <laughs> Are you selling any extra parts from the build on offer up? Hell yeah, I am. Hit me up buy that shit. Easiest versus toughest thing you guys had to do on the car. Uh, easiest was building the engine. We do that shit in 10 minutes, uh, almost every other day. Bars Hardest, the ladder bars. yeah, the diff, like the whole diff setup, uh, building the diff, changing the gears on it, the bearings, like the ladder bars, all like the coilovers, all that shit was really hard. 
the harder part was the cage, so that's why we didn't do it. We ended up paying Sergio to do it because Sergio actually owns his own shop. He does this for a living, goes with councils of like really high horsepower cars, so we weren't trying to put that on us. So the, for us, we just decided to stay with the, with the div. This is how was the banter between the teams. Uh, we're actually like basically like boys like the whole time. Like even though we talk shit, at the end of the day, we're still friends. We don't really care. It's a show. How is it working with your brother under a given timeline? Uh, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, no one really knew, but we built two cars that same month. Uh, one was during the show from eight to seven, eight to six, and then we'll leave to our shop at night to build another car we we're building for a customer. And we got the car done way before the building battle car too. So we got the other FC running before the drag car. And then how far was it not done or giving away the results? Mike told everyone. He told my grandma, he told his girlfriend, he told all his customers, he told everybody. So luckily he didn't actually post it online. We posted a little shit here and there, but it was actually hard just watching all the people comment all that like stupid hating. shit. Yeah, they're like saying they were gonna get walked yeah. and all this shit. Like, so that was the hard part, just listening to all the dumb comments about us losing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the whole time we we're just like laughing inside because we won. So, you know, that was pretty fun.